I absolutely hate social media. It destroys me and I want to talk about the dangers of social media. I hope everyone watches this, especially those who have maybe young teenagers because the statistics don't lie. If you haven't seen my TED talk, it's called A Tragedy Called Perfection and I will put that in the description box below. While doing research for this TED talk, I was astounded by the statistic evidence that this generation of social media, so I would say probably the age range, maybe 18 to 30 years old, and I think I'm kind of on the older side of that. This generation is facing this mental health crisis this mental health epidemic. The rates of anxiety, suicide, depression are at an all time high. In every single literature that I came through, this generation is so unhappy. And it's crazy because you think, why? Why would they be unhappy? They have these perfect lives on social media. Why, could, why would they be so unhappy? It's really, I think because of young adults and teens being addicted to their screens and to their phones. I want to talk to you guys about my struggle with social media and why I honestly, I can't use it that often because I have my own subset of mental health problems, which I will talk about in another video, but I do suffer with, um, I think, a sense of perfectionism, which is very ironic because that's what my TED talk was about. But sometimes you have to talk about, like you can only talk about and give authority on something that you experience yourself. You know, like I can't talk about, you know, going through alcoholism because that's not something I've ever been through, right? So I feel like, yes, it is ironic that I talk about it, but it is something that I suffer with so much. And so I hope that others who suffer with the same thing can relate to me. So when I started YouTube, this was back in 2011, and I became actually like, not, not pretty big, but I think I was a lot bigger back then than I am now. Um, this was about five years ago. And so I was invited to a lot of the influencer events and a lot of the parties. And I did hang out with some influencers who are just starting out back then who are humongous now. And I know they probably don't remember me and that's okay. Like I understand a lot of opportunities come your way, but it made me realize how shallow sometimes these relationships are and how this whole influencer thing sometimes is kind of messed up. I remember specifically at one party and this was some big influencers party. They rented out this whole club and it was one of the most exclusive clubs in LA and they had this they had their own private tables, which is very, very expensive. Like it might be $25,000 a night or whatever in this very upscale club. And they had these amazing, beautiful Instagram model girls. I was so surprised because the entire time in this club, they literally sat there on their phones. This was back in 2011 or 2012. Like this was back a long time ago before even like Facetune and all that stuff became super popular. But they were literally on their phones and they had, I think they had to like manually use Photoshop, Photoshopping their pictures, sitting on the outside of the table, not having fun, not enjoying the music, not drinking at all. And I think in one of the pictures they had like people holding up like champagne glasses and stuff or like shots and stuff. But of course they wouldn't drink it because I think one of the girls said, no, if I drink, I, I'm gonna get fat. And of course it's all about image. So nobody was dancing at the club. Nobody was having a good time. Everybody was literally on their phones, on the table, at the table, this very expensive LA table, um, editing their photos. And after they got the photos that they liked, I think they even hired a professional photographer and they just left. If you look on their feed, you would you would see like, oh my God, they must have had such a good time. Like, look how beautiful they are. Like their lives must be amazing. But it was literally like almost like a photo shoot and they left and nobody was dancing and nobody was having a good time. It was simply for this image. This was back like eight, eight years ago. So I'm sure it's just progressively getting worse. And that gave me the first insight as to how, f I guess, fake social media is. I, I just want to be real. I think if anything in my life, I always want to be authentic. I don't want to be fake. I don't want to pretend. I don't want to be overly positive. I want to be real and authentic. So that way I treat like my followers as if I had a little sister or a daughter or whatnot. And I want to tell these stories because 
I don't want people to be so blindsided when they get older. I uh, do a lot of like entrepreneurial e-commerce businesses. I do run Banish and so um, I do go to a lot of conferences and events. And there's this one situation in which this, this guy who actually lives in my city, he messaged me on Facebook and was like, yo, Daisy, where are you staying? And I was like, whoa, like first and foremost, like I've never ever talked to you in my life before. I think he saw me in the conference list and he probably saw that I was a girl, you know, a young woman and was probably like, this is my time to like hook up with random bitches. And so I completely ignored it. See, I didn't realize that that was his intention. I honestly thought his intention was, oh, he he has like a client service. Um, they make certain things for businesses. <laughs> um, so I thought, oh, maybe he, you know, wants business or maybe he wants to talk or whatever. So I kind of ignored it. But then when I went to the event and they had this little like um, reception cocktail hour thing, I actually saw him and he was with another chick. And I was so confused because in his profile picture, it was him with his fiance and now I think they have a baby together, but he was with a random other chick and I was confused. I didn't know like who she was. She was obviously kind of drunk and not in the right state of mind, I would say. Later towards the evening, I asked him somebody who knew him. I said, who is she? And he said, oh, she's, oh my gosh, <laughs> really? The dog, my dog. He said, oh, you know, that's his like, like his chick. And I was like, what do you mean his chick? And he's like, yeah, he has like chicks wherever he goes, like every city he travels to. He has like, basically he has hoes in all area codes, right? And I was like, oh my God, it's true. Like those lyrics to those songs, it's true. Like I never, I guess I was so innocent because that sort of infidelity is something I am definitely not okay with and I don't really see it. So um, I guess it was true, but what made me so like disgusted, honestly, was that on his social media profile, he presents his, himself as this wonderful, loving, I guess now husband, right? Husband, they have so many pictures of him and his wife together. Um, now they have a kid and I mean, if you look at social media, you would think like he is like a rock star husband, right? And the fact that every time he's gone or out of town, he just cheats with whoever he wants. The fact that he like, DM'd me because he wanted like maybe a backup side chick. I don't know, right? But it was, and obviously we never talked after that. He never even asked me anything about me or like pretended to get interest in me. He obviously just wanted to have side chicks, like a wait list of side chicks in case that this side bitch didn't work out. It made me feel so like, oh my God, I cannot, like I just don't ever wanna be involved in the social media thing. I don't wanna perpetuate this image of lies to people because it just, it just literally like, I feel like I wanna vomit, like thinking about how fake people can be. I've also heard on social media that, um, you know, these, I'm not saying all, but a lot of these Instagram girls, they have sugar daddies, they are high paid escorts. Um, they get paid or to travel around the world to be with very, very wealthy men. I see a lot of young girls and if I had, you know, a younger sister and she was looking at these images and she's like, I want to be an influencer. I would tell her this so that she can make decisions for herself and she's not blindsided into um, this life. Because I think a lot of young girls are being sold to this thinking that they can do this, but you don't see what's on the other side. You don't see all the struggle that people have. Um, to get to where they are. All you see is this beautiful vacation of themselves in Dubai with these designer yachts and handbags, but you don't know what they had to do on that yacht or what they've had to do to get there. And there have been instances. I think social media is so dangerous because it perpetuates this image of someone's life that is so, so, so imperfect. And I think people are so unhappy on social media because they're comparing themselves to other people's amazing lives. But again, you don't know what happens behind the scenes. For example, even for me honestly like before this guy like messaged me um I vaguely knew who he was and I I would say it was yeah I was kind of jealous I was like oh my god that girl she has this, like she has this amazing life look they travel around the world together they're so cute couple goals hashtag and then I saw what actually happened and it I don't know it broke my heart made me feel disgusted it made me just feel like like everything in life is a lie like things that I thought were true are definitely not true I think we all have to be very very careful 
of what we see and how we use social media and really understand that comparison is the thief of joy. Literally, comparison is the thief of joy. Don't just look at somebody and think they have an amazing life. Don't just, you know, see couple goals and think their relationship is perfect. Don't look at, oh, oh, huh, I, 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 well, the girl brosses, oh my God. I could go on and on. I absolutely hate the whole girl boss be a girl boss like on Instagram movement because it's definitely not that case, not what it is. Um, just because you have a sugar daddy supporting your and financing your business does not make you a girl boss. I'm sorry, <laughs> but but um, you know I have I have a chip on my shoulder because nobody fucking supported me. <laughs> nobody fucking supported. Me. Okay. Everyone's probably like, Daisy, you're such a hypocrite because you run your business on social media and now you're like throwing it to shame and you say you hate it, blah, blah, blah. And yes, I can understand why people would think um, I'm hypocriticalness. But what I see social media being now is that we can use it for positive change. We can use it for positivity. And that's where I want social media and where I want our social media accounts to be going into. You know, for Banish, and our handle is at Banish Acne Scars, I never want to portray, ever, 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 I never want to portray an image of what you look like like of what your life will be like if you have perfect skin ever. We have absolutely never hired um, models. We've never like photoshopped like our our like people's skin. We've never, you know, we, we've never had these fancy photo shoots that cost bajillions of dollars because we're real, we're authentic, we're relatable, we're, we're vulnerable, we're sharing with you. Hey, we got you, like we understand what it feels like to struggle with these skin conditions. And for me, first and foremost, I've suffered with acne, skin conditions all my life, and I for one know what it feels like to have that, right? Every single message I say, I say it's never the way you look. It's never the way you appear to the outside world. It's always the way you feel inside that matters the most. If you feel like you can walk outside your house and go on without makeup, if you feel like you have the confidence to, you know, give that big presentation at work, like that's what I care about. Like that's what I care about. I don't care about, you know, the way you look is so superficial because as you see these people on Instagram, these people on social media, it's, it's, it's an image. It doesn't mean they feel good about themselves, right? And I think so many people are so reliant on the image they portray that they're sacrificing and they're willing to almost sell their soul to create and craft that image, which makes me so almost sad that that's kind of the, the world we're living in, that there's people willing to do these kind of things for this image. One of my favorite channels on YouTube is, was it Shallon XO? And she was saying, Oh, he gave you, she, she had a quote, I loved it. Or she said, she said like, oh yeah, he bought you a $50,000 gift that you're showing off on Instagram. Is that because he cheated on you the fourth time in a row? Is that the price for selling your soul? You cannot believe any of that bullshit you see on social and on social media. And so I want to kind of change the narrative and I want to showcase and I want to sh not even showcase, I want to give positivity and, um, give things that help you with your internal healing instead of trying to create this image that you have to buy into because this image, it won't help anybody. And I don't wanna sell you false hope into something. Like I never wanna sell you false hope. I never wanna sell you this um, magic in a jar because that's not what it is. This is not what it is about. I've had my own issues with social media because I am a perfectionist and I am so hard on myself. Um, and I've had to use social media very, very, very intentionally because if I didn't need to use social media for my job and for my work because we are on social media and that's the way we spread our message and we can use it positively. I always want to make sure that Daisy, when you're using social media, you're very intentional. You're using it in a positive way, not using it in a negative way. So what I have done is I deleted Facebook and I deleted Instagram from my phone. Um, if I need to use Instagram for like an Instagram live, um, which I do do like once a week, I will always re-download it and I will delete it right after because otherwise if I have it on my phone, I will notice in the middle of the night when I wake up, you know, uh, when I'm stuck in traffic or when, um, you know, I'm waiting for my coffee from the coffee shop, I will just mindlessly scroll. So actually, if I need to use social media, I use it on my computer, on my desktop for the actual task at hand, but I don't use it in terms of getting into this like 
like this, uh, what do you call it? This like world of being manipulated by algorithms. I'm actually very, very surprised that there is no regulation done to these big companies, i.e. Facebook, because what they're doing is ultimately creating algorithms to get the human being addicted to their devices. For my TED talk, I did so much research on social media and because we work on social media, I understand how everything works and everything is an algorithm. You know, everything is, you're, they're hiring the top, top, top computer science students from all over the world, getting them into their office and Facebook or whatever, and trying to get them to manipulate the end user so the user stays on the, their site way longer, right? That's why YouTube, um, one of their big algorithms is watch time. They want you to stay on <laughs> and watch the videos longer, right? So they're constantly manipulating and changing the algorithm so that people are just inherently so, so, so addicted to their devices. Like if you understand that you are being manipulated by this big, big, big company, this big corporation, then hopefully you can understand how to use social media to your benefit instead of being manipulated by just random computer codes, right? I always tell my team, like, think of it as a game. Like, think of it as a game and don't think of it as like, oh my God, I need to compare my life or oh my God, I need, you know, she has this and I don't have this and therefore I should be unhappy. No, that's not what it is. It's just, it's just like, it's just something that's manipulated, right? To make you feel this way so that way you, want to stay on this app longer or whatever, you know? So just be very, very mindful, be very intentional about social media. And I really do hope that this generation can be happier. I don't know how to make that happen. And somehow I think I'm, you know, very idealistic and maybe I can help people feel better about themselves. But for me and for my social media, because I don't have these apps on my phone, for example, if I go to a nice restaurant or if I go on vacation or if I go somewhere beautiful, the, the old me, the first thing I would have done is pull out my phone, post it on Instagram, post it, post it, post it. Oh my God, look where I am. Like, look how beautiful this is, right? But now what I try to do is now I try to actually be in the moment, be present, like smell the beautiful air of wherever I'm at, see the beautiful sights, eat the amazing food, and try to my best to remember what this feels like because I will never get another moment of this ever again in my life. You cannot take your Instagram feed with you to the grave. And so I, for once, am trying to be more present and not post, like, <laughs> be more present and not focus so much. She's drinking my water. You're drinking my water, that was for me. <laughs> and not, Lily! and not try to worry so much about posting the perfect image and more about worrying about am I being present in this moment. I remember even um, on one of the trips I've had like to Greece long, long time ago, the entire trip was like, let's take 10 pictures in a row at the right angles, at the right light. And it was never about let's enjoy this, let's soak it in, let's, let's feel the sun on our skin, let's remember the sights, remember the sounds. But it was more about, oh my God, does this angle make me look fatter? Oh, the sun is in this way for this photo, can we change it, all that. And I honestly think that somewhat that that was kind of a waste right? That was almost a waste in my life because yes, even though I was there, I was not fully present. Photos don't mean anything to me, right? I lost that moment, that time in my life and I won't get that back, you know? So I think that's a good lesson for me to try to be more present into certain things, to stop worrying about how I externally, how my life appears to other people and to cherish an important part of my life, which is my presence um, which is being present, which is the time and how I feel about something that can never be captured in social media. So on that note, follow me on social media. <laughs> follow me on social media at days or the night. No, um, so I hope I want to challenge you guys to 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 think about how you use social media, to use it intentionally, to use it for good. I think. We can definitely use it for good. I know for Banish, our account, we use it for skin positivity, which is so amazing. We're making other people feel good about ourselves. So use it for good. Don't use it for the negative implications. And I really hope that this movement of, you know, skin positivity and being authentic really spreads um, and realizing, hey, people, you don't need to be perfect and you can be you and just do you. So thank you all so much for watching. Hit that like button because I do believe this is a very important message that everyone needs to hear. And subscribe because I'm going to be on here more like 
telling you the real authentic shit that goes down. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Hey soldiers, it's Daisy, founder of Banish. Did you like this video? Please give it a thumbs up and comment and subscribe to our channel to be featured of any future Banish acne diaries and skin positivity comment. Thank you and don't forget, Banish, we got your back. Bye.